Chapter 10, Section 4. Bring the process model to an adequate granularity level. Conceptual models are usually on a more abstract level. On the implementation level, you have to very specifically and very fine granular specify how the process operates. This is usually the case that the conceptual model is too abstract. A strategy is to decompose it. That means we take one activity, that is coarse granular, and specify it in more detail by a whole sub-process with several individual steps. Less common, but also existing, is the case that certain parts of the process may be too detailed. It could be that we specify different checks as separate activity, while on the technical level, these can be aggregated and integrated into one electronic form. This is less likely to happen, but it also exists. One of the challenges is also that at a fine granular level of detail, we may observe that there are tasks for which we do not understand how they may potentially be ordered. As a rule of thumb, a sub-process whose tasks are performed in an ad hoc manner, without any predefined order, is not suitable for automation with BPMN based BPMS. In this case, a case management system or an ad hoc workflow system is more appropriate. Systems such as Kamunda allow us to have an overall BPMN process that has CMMN sub-processes. CMMN is the case management model and notation. It is a language that helps us to specify those processes for which the order of tasks is not predefined. Let's have a look at an example. CMMN defines which tasks have to be executed, although potentially restricted by certain conditions. It describes what has to be achieved in the process instead of how that is supposed to be achieved in detail. It can be used as a sub-process in a BPMN model and vice versa. That means not only BPMN can have sub-processes that are CMMN, but CMMN tasks can also have BPMN sub-processes. On the right hand side, you see some of the notations. You see that certain activities are connected, requiring that certain conditions hold. For providing a product, we need to check raw materials available. If that check is done, we get a list of missing raw materials. Depending on required, we may request raw materials from supplier 1 or 2. Other activities are relevant to this process, including receiving delivery from supplier 1 or receiving delivery from supplier 2. Clearly these are optional. If enough raw materials are available, we can manufacture the product. This may actually then lead to completion of the process as much as purchasing a product from a partner and selling it. Chapter 10, Section 5. Specifying Execution Properties 
To make a model fully executable, we need to specify in the last step how each model element is effectively implemented by the BPMS. There are several execution properties that are relevant here. This means we need to explicitly define what are the variables in the process and what are their data structures. The same holds for messages, signals, arrows and other data types. We need to explicitly define how data are mapped. It means, for example, how a certain input message is handled and which data fields are further processed. We also need to specify the service details of services, the send and receiving tasks, and for messages and signal events. Often, we need the web service interface address such that we can actually call these web services. For script tasks we need to know the code snippets that have to be executed. This is program code that we need to provide to the BPMS. A big challenge is also to specify exactly the assignment rules. We need to make known to the BPMS who are the participants of the process and to which roles they belong. We have to provide user interfaces for user tasks. For tasks, event and sequence flow, we need to define the expressions explicitly that determine whether we walk left or right after a decision gateway. And there may be several furthermore BPMS specific properties. Business processes often require that we take decisions Often these decisions are clearly defined by so-called business rules. The Object Management Group has developed the so-called Decision Model and Notation Standard, which allows us to specify business rules. DMN provides three parts for specifying business rules at different levels of granularity. The Decision Requirements Graph, DRG, allows us to describe how data is propagated between different decisions. The so-called Simple Expression Language, as feel, is used to define how values are extracted from variables. Most popular of DMN are Decision Tables, they specify how certain inputs translate into certain outputs. How do DMN tables work? We here have an example of a DMN table. Each table has a table name that is loan grade here in this example. We have to specify a hit indicator whether we want to uniquely identify one role or if several can be chosen. The completeness indicator says if at least one of the rules have to apply or whether it is also possible that none of the rules apply. The priority indicator says which rules to choose first. Input attributes are shown as different columns. Here, columns have a blue color. There is annual income and loan size that are relevant for the grade. There are also output attributes. Here, it is a single output attribute that is called grade. 
the facet is the range that these grades can take. We have to read this table as follows. The rule with the A priority is the rule in the row A, referring to an annual income in the range from 0 to 1000 and the loan size from 0 to 1000. Corresponding grade is VG. Very good. The second row is referred to as B. We have an annual income between 250 and 750 with a loan size that is much larger, 4000 to 5000. The grade is considered to be good, G. In this way, we can read a table row by row. And if a unique hit applies, we choose the first rule according to the priorities that we define to determine the output. Chapter 10, Section 6, The Last Mile. We can distinguish three categories of BPMS with respect to the support of BPMN. They are pure BPMN engines. These systems have been designed from the ground up to support BPMN natively. Examples are Activity and Kamunde. They also adapted BPMN. These tools use BPMN as a skin but rely on internal representations to execute the business process. Examples are Besagi and Bonita. There are also non-BPMN systems. This category of BPMS uses their own priority language and semantics. These systems do not support BPMN. An example is the system that is called YAL. On the book's website, we provide various tutorials showing how to perform the last steps of our method for various concrete BPMS. Please go to our website at fundamentals-of-bpm.org. Chapter 11. Section 7. Recap. We recap. In this chapter, we discussed a five-step method for transforming conceptual process models into executable ones. These five steps are the following. We have to identify the automation boundaries. We have to review manual tasks. We have to complete the process model and we have to bring it onto the right level of granularity. And finally, we have to specify execution properties. Along the way, we have seen how CMMN can be used as a technique to deal with unordered tasks, and how DMN can be used for specifying business rules.